All right, hello everyone. This is Video Boy, and welcome to episode three of the LibJDX 2D game tutorial series. So, um, for this episode, we're going to talk about Delta Time. We're also going to start working a little bit on uh, menus and different screens and handling that. We won't actually make any menus or anything. We're just going to organize the game in a good way so we can start doing that later on. So first I'm going to talk about Delta Time. So I talked about it, well I mentioned it in the last episode. Um, and it's a really important concept for game development. It's almost essential. And um, so I'll explain it to you. So I said there's a little problem with uh, just adding 4 to the Y whenever the person is pressing up or you know the different controls and the problem with that is it um, it'll go faster or slower depending on the frames per second so I mentioned that the render method is being called for every frame right so just say the person's game is running at 30 frames per second render is going to get called 30 times but if the game's running at 60 frames per second it's going to get called 60 times per second so just say the person's pressing up and their FPS is at 30. Well here I'll show you a little diagram. Just say their FPS is at 30 and they're pressing up. So every second they're going to be traveling 120 pixels. So 4 times 30 and then times 1 per, for every second. But if their frames per second is 60 they're going to be traveling at 240. So that's a big problem. I can actually demonstrate that for you. Uh, it'll give me a chance to show you the configurations a bit too. So if you go on your desktop project, you open up desktop launcher. Here you have a configuration object. So here you're able to change many settings. So if you do config dot, it'll give you a list of all the different settings you can change. There's a whole bunch. I won't go through all of them. Uh, but you can change whether it's full screen, you can change the width and height of the window by default when it first opens up. Uh, if you can resize the window, and a bunch of things like that. A bunch of uh, OpenGL settings. But the one that I'm going to show you is foreground FPS. So this is the FPS when your game is being run in the foreground, so when the person's actually playing it. There's background FPS, so just say the person's not actually active on the window. You can run the game at a different frame per second, so it doesn't take up too much CPU. Um, so let's have it at 30 to start off. All right, and we'll run the game like that. Okay. As you can see, the logo is moving like it was last episode. It's a bit slow, and also 30 FPS is a bit choppy too, you might notice. Well, you guys are watching on YouTube anyways at 30 FPS. But when you run the game on your computer, you'll see it's a bit choppy. So that would be if the person has a really bad computer or something, or they're on a mobile device that's slow. And if they run at 60 FPS, as you can see, it's a lot faster. It's actually twice as fast. So delta time is the solution to this problem. So what is it exactly? Well, delta time is the fraction of a second uh, of difference in time between this frame that you're currently rendering and the last frame. So just say your game's running at 60 frames per second. It'll, um, it'll be, the delta time should be around, here, let me get a calculator out. You can actually do the calculation, one divided by the FPS, so 60. So the delta time should be around 0 0.0166 repeated. So libgdx actually has a built-in thing to give you the delta time really easily. Why isn't this working? All right, I guess I'll just write it out. So I'll print it out. So if you... So to access it, you do gdx dot graphics dot get delta time. So delta time will return a float. 
Uh, a float is basically a number with a decimal. So just like your x and y has a decimal. All right. So let's run the game. And since we're running at 60 frames per second, it should show around 0 0.01666. Uh, it's actually doing scientific notation right now because it's such a small decimal. Um, anyways, so yeah, it, it should be around there. I don't think it is. Maybe I have some settings wrong or something. But anyways, let's just solve this issue. So let's start off by creating a constant. So public static final float speed. Um, I'll do 40 now. So instead of doing 4 and writing it every time, and then just say if you want to change a player speed, you have to change it for every single one. You can just put the speed there, and then you just get the variable. So we can e easily change the speed to our liking, instead of having to change it like we're doing right now. So from now on, if you want to change the speed, we just change it here. Um, so how delta time works is you need to um, you need to multiply uh, what you're adding by the delta time. So uh, I don't know how to explain this perfectly, but just say the speed is 40. If you multiply it by the delta time, you're going to be traveling at 40 frame, uh, 40 pixels per second. So just say the delta time, like your FPS is 60, and the delta time is 0 0.0166 repeated, like I said. It's going to do 40 times that for every frame and there's going to be 60 frames so at every second in the end you're going to end up traveling exactly 40 no matter what your fps is if your fps is 30 it's going to be the delta time is going to be a, of course a bit more and you'll be able to travel at exactly 40 pixels per second no matter what your speed is uh, like the fps is um, so let's actually change this i think i mentioned last video there's a quick shortcut so you can do plus equals, so it'll add to it. It's just a good shortcut. I wanted to show you guys the other way, so it'll help you understand a bit. Uh, this should actually be minus equals because you're taking away from the x value and here the y. Uh, you can't do that. Okay, so speed times gdx dot graphics dot get delta time. Oh, I didn't do times. All right, let's copy that. All right, now let's run the game. We'll do the FPS test again, just to prove that it works. So right now, it's 40 pixels per second is pretty slow, especially if you're running at really high, uh, like a high resolution. Yeah, let's turn it up a bit first before we do our test. Let's say 120. If you're doing a more pixelated game, which we're probably going to end up doing, uh, you don't have to do that high of a speed since uh, pixels are, are bigger, so it looks like you're traveling faster. All right. And then now, go into the desktop launcher, change a frame rate, frame rate to 30. And it should be exactly the same speed. I'll change it back to 60. There's no point in making the FPS slower. Right again, just to make sure. So there you go. That's how it works. 
Um, so now for the next part of the video, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, screen management for different menus. Yeah, so for different menus. Um, but the first step we need to do to do this is we need to change the name of the main class. When I created it, I wasn't thinking um, about what we're going to do exactly. Uh, but we're going to need to change it because we need to use another class by libgdx called the game. So to change it, it's not too hard. You just go to the class, right click on it, refactor, rename it. So when you rename stuff here, it'll update the reference to it everywhere in all the code. So you don't need to change it anywhere else. So we'll call it space game since that's what our game's going to be. All right. So the first thing we need to do is change this. So application adapter is more for just general applications, but libgdx also has a thing called game. And this will give us a bunch of tools to handle different menus and things like that that are very useful. So um, so do that, just do extends game instead of application adapter. And this is going to let us um, have different menus and things like that. So first step you need to do is in render call this dot render and also in here this dot create okay so let's make our first screen let's make a game screen we won't do a menu in this episode but we can later on uh, so let's just refresh the import so that it's all nice and clean we don't have imports we're not going to use Alright, so since we're creating a whole new set of classes, we're going to create screen classes, make a new package. So a package is basically like a folder. So we'll have a folder called screens. And in here we're going to store all the different screen classes. Create a class. And we'll call it game screen. Since it's for the game. And then we could have a main menu screen eventually, a game over screen, different stuff like that. All right, and similar to before, instead of extending game though, since we're not creating another game, we're creating a screen. So extend screen. Import that. Oh, okay. Uh, I messed something up a little bit. Um, I noticed that when I was doing the video. Instead of doing extends, you have to do implements. So you're just implementing the screen tools. So you're implementing all the methods. So now whenever you set this as a new screen, it's going to call these methods. So these methods are getting called at different moments. So when the screen first appears, the, start, the show method is going to get called. Uh, just like for the space game class, the render method gets called uh, at the frame rate. So it gets looped every every frame. Uh, dispose is something you call when you want to get rid of a screen. And there's, yeah, that's basically it for now. You don't have to go into the other ones. Those are pretty much the main ones. All right, so let's bring our stuff over. So let's bring all this over. We don't need that in the main class, so try to keep the main class all nice and clean. By the way, I I, re, I called it main game screen. Uh, you can just do the refactor thing like before. Okay. Uh, take this. That's, uh, if you guys remember, that's uh, what we call to get the image from the uh, assets folder. Okay, and then in render, we'll take all this. Okay, we'll come here. All right, I have to bring the speed over too. 
just cut everything out of here. We're not going to need it in here anymore. Even this, I think I'm going to take out. Oh, there's something I need to do I forgot about real quick. Okay, so the main game class is going to be pretty, pretty plain from now on. Okay. So right now it's giving us an error, it says we don't have the batch. So what I'm going to do is when we create a new main game screen, uh, we're going to make it pass the space game object. Sorry, there might be a little bit of background noise sometimes, that's why I keep pausing right now. Bit of interruptions. Okay, so make the constructor now. And in here we'll pass space game. So when you create when you create the new main uh, main game screen, we're gonna pass the space game so that now from here within this class, within this object, we're going to be able to access the main game class so we can access things. So right now we're doing this so we can access the batch. So the first step in doing this is making that public. All right, so we make it public so you can access it outside of this one, this class. All right, get rid of those unused imports. Okay, so now we need to set this variable to the one that is passed. So very simple, this.game is equal to game. So when you use the this keyword, you're referring to the game variable within this object and if you're not using this it's usually the one that's passed through here or the variable that's within this method alright so looking good so now the only change we need to do is do game dot because the batch doesn't belong to this object it belongs to the space game which we set into game right so game so we're getting game and then we're getting its batch and then we're using it to draw and things like that All right, I think that's pretty much all for now in this class. So the main big important part is we need to set the screen. So that's pretty easy. All you do, uh, when you extend game, it gives you a method called set screen. Uh, I'll just use this so I can have a nice list of them. There we go. Set screen. And we'll create a new main game screen. And remember in the constructor we asked for a space game object. So the object we're going to pass is this because we're referring to uh, this class and this object that's being used. All right, get all the imports in, and I think that should work. Let's try it. So it shouldn't look any different from before, but... Whoa, okay, I got an error. I'll just fix that and I'll get right back. Uh, okay, I did something I wasn't supposed to. I'm not really used to using this libgx game class. I usually handle screens on my own, but I thought I'd use this to make it simpler. But basically, you're not supposed to call this.create. But this dot render is actually important, so we need to call that one. There you go. That should work now. Oh, I guess not. Oh, okay. I guess we do have to remove this dot render. Maybe it's something else. Hold on, I'll get back to you guys. Uh, it was a very simple mistake. I don't know how I didn't catch that. You're not supposed to call this dot render, or else you're going to end up calling the same method and you're just going to keep looping back and forth. It's supposed to called call super dot render. 
And I think I'll do that here too. That shouldn't cause any bugs. Ah, uh, it looks like there's not even a create method in the super class. Okay, so we're good for now, and this should work now. There you go. Works just like it's supposed to. Alright, so that pretty much ends this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like. I know there were some interruptions going on, and I had that bug in the end. But in the end, now it's working. Uh, so for the next episode, I'm not exactly too sure what we're going to do. Probably going to start working on the actual game, maybe importing a couple of our own graphics. And um, oh, maybe I'll show you a little bit about how the mouse input works and things like that. Well, we'll see. I'll let you guys know. Anyways, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys next Tuesday. And also, I'm going back to my normal schedule now. I, uh, I took uh, three weeks off. Uh, since I was sick and also uh, I went on vacation but now we're going to get back into the normal schedule so next Sunday there's going to be a devlog for Archipelago and then I'll have the tutorials after that so see you guys then goodbye